Hello folks. Well, I'm not sure how well this is going to work out, but I'm going to give it a go. Uh, this is uh, a Commodore PR100. It's not the normal sort of thing I do, but um, this was the second calculator that I ever owned. And uh, I'm just going to sort of see if we can get it to work. At the moment, there's absolutely nothing coming out of it at all. So I just got it off of eBay. So let's see what's inside it. I'm dreading this moment, it could just be a complete disaster. I need a little the bits in. And the moment of truth. Well, okay, well, the rechargeable batteries are now, it doesn't look too bad actually. There's a lot of, there's a fair bit of gunge coming out of the uh, rechargeable batteries. I'll just show you there. A bit of gunge there. And let's see, there's a bit of gunge there as well. So, okay, let's see what we can do with this. Um, I'm actually a bit more positive than I, than I was before, but uh, possibly that's misplaced. Um, now, I'm nice of them to actually mark red and black and this looks like some sort of is it an inverter or something not sure right okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna try and see if we can get this thing to work i'm gonna well, i'll tell you what i'm gonna measure what's on the what's across these batteries just in case that you know Batteries are okay, but they look pretty tired to me, to be honest with you. Let's have a look. Dead. Absolutely dead as a dodo. So that's not very good, is it? Okay, so let's uh, see. Now, what I do know, uh, I'm not sure what voltage should go in here, but what I do know is that the voltage across these, uh, there's 1.2 volts for each of these NICADs, so that's 3.6 volts. So I'm going to put on the power supply unit and wire it up to 3.6 volts there we go that'll do and it's currently at 100 milliamps so it's like very good of them to to have red and black So as soon as I put it on there, yeah, these these cells are going nowhere. So I've got, I'm showing on here, I'll just put you on here. Get it in shot. There's next to no voltage on there. Is it going up? It is going up. Okay, I've currently limited it to about uh, 100 milliamps here. So I'm wondering if maybe I should just up it a little bit up the ante to give it about 300 milliamps and let's see if we can get this thing to get up to a reasonable voltage let's actually see if there's any differential so that one's at 0 0.4445 this middle one's at ooh. Oh dear, <laughs> they're not very equal, are they? So I've got 2.7 volts across all of them at the moment. It's going up. Shall we see what happens when it gets to about 3 volts or so and see if this thing switches on? Let's have a look, see. Ah, <laughs> oh, keyboard's doing nothing. Hmm. Actually, there is something going on with the keyboard. 
it's just not quite what I wanted it to be. Well, we've got a display on there. Next thing is to see what's wrong with it. Um, so looks like none of the keys down there do so. It's been a lot so long since I last used this calculator that I have no idea what it should look like or not. So let's um well this is not holding any charge at all so I think what we're gonna do is completely remove this battery pack. Probably gonna snip it off I think. I think somebody's had a go at rework on this. I'm not sure if you can see this or not. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. I'm not sure if this was originally from the factory or not, but it looks a bit messy, so I'm assuming. Not sure you can see the flux residue here. What's this nonsense? Oh no, that's a bit of plastic. It's just the way that also this there's a gap here as well. So I'm a bit worried that there might be something more afoot than uh, than what I originally thought. I'm just going to strip these and try it actually without the batteries completely because it might just be that that voltage wasn't quite enough. What's wrong with these today? It's not like it. Oh. Somebody doesn't like stripping this one. I need to. I might have to do it the old fashioned way. another go. So I've got 3.6 volts. It's about 178 milliamps. Okay, 0.00. Uh, regrettably, it doesn't look great, does it? Okay. More work. Okay, so that didn't take long, so I'm just, to take this apart basically you just pull off this, well pull it off, you have to unscrew this off of here, um, and uh, then there's a couple little clips holding the keyboard in just down here, which you just slightly sort of pull the case apart and the keyboard comes out, so it didn't take long to find actually that it's if I turn it over and unfortunately you can see somebody's definitely had a go at this already if you look at this um, this is um, pretty messy uh, so I'm going to have to see if we can clean this up um, what I might do is as we're here I was going to see if I can um, see if there's definitely some oh. oops is missing continuity. See that one's alright, that one there. That sort of looks alright. I'm going to have to have a little bit of a bigger look in here because I haven't quite worked out why this is not working. Um, I'll give it a little clean, maybe put it in the um, ultra ultrasonic bath or something see what we can get out of it but it's pretty messy at the moment so uh, let me see if I can fix it 
Right, folks. Well, here we go. I think we might have got somewhere. There you go. Yeah. How about that? I think this is almost a success. So, let's have a look. Plus minus. Can't find a plus minus key now. There we go. Get all the segments on. I think this is a bit of a success. And, um, yeah, so uh, let me tell you what we've done to this to, uh, to get it to work. And uh, hopefully it will be uh, quite useful. So this is the PR100. And um, as you saw when I originally got it, it was um, in a bit of a sorry state really. And uh, so I've had to do a little bit of working out. I mean, the batteries were, well, they're useless. Um, so let's have a look see what else we've got on here, which I've had to change. Now, I did put it into the ultrasonic bath. didn't make a lot of difference. I'm afraid this corrosion is not the sort of corrosion that's going to come off uh, too easily. So I've kind of um, left that uh, as it is. I did manage to find that uh, there was a... When I tried to fix the power from... Uh, is this in the battery? Yeah, it's in the battery. Um, managed to pull a track which wasn't great. The other tracks seem to be okay, so that's okay. So you be careful because some of these tracks are actually lifting off of the board, so uh, they're not great and possibly uh, they might come adrift uh, if I take this apart too many times. And you notice that there's a, there's a little addition here. Um, what I've done is I've added a new cap, a, a 33 microfarad um, cap in here because this inverter which creates about minus four volts something like that the output of it was all over the place so i popped a, a 33 microfarad cap I, i'm assuming because of this encapsulated uh, business here um the, there's a capacitor in there that's just died so anyway i've um put that on the output and uh, so that's pretty good and yeah read basically read it all apart from this I read it all the wiring the other thing that I did I turns out didn't really make any difference although when I popped it on the scope I noticed the power supply got lots of noise on it and um, there are a couple of uh, these little 33 microfarad caps uh, one here and one here I replaced those as well while I was at it and uh, didn't make a lot of difference. However, uh, might as well. I haven't actually measured the ESR on those yet, so perhaps I should have done. But anyway, so there you go. So I'm just going to pop it back in its um, in its case now. And uh, by the way, couldn't quite get the batteries to the size that I really wanted them because uh, this is slightly smaller. It's a bit of a squeeze in there with the battery case. So I've had to do a little bit of hacking on the inside of the case here. See how pull these out and whatnot but uh, needs must sometimes at least this makes it rechargeable so uh, that's good and one thing to note just in case you're into pr100s the the outer of the of this is um is the is negative and the tip is positive of this three and a half millimeter just uh, to save you the effort of trying to figure that out yourself okay so i'm just going to pop this uh, back together and uh, be back with you in a moment Okay, so here we go. Proof of the pudding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus minus E nine zero. Plus minus. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, one plus two equals three. Nice. Okay, should we do a little program? Now I haven't done this for thirty years, so hopefully this is going to work. So plus one equals go to zero zero and put it into run i'm not sure if you do this or not it seems it seems i have to do go to zero zero to get this actually to start and let's see if this adds up there we go the speed of that and i can't actually remember how to stop it so <laughs> and switched off so there we go there's technology 70 style thanks very much for watching